Good morning, everybody. We want to welcome you to a time of worship this morning. Uh, we're so excited that you guys have tuned in to be a part of our uh, time of, um, of really uh, online services uh, here today. Uh, we're calling today kind of our quarantine prayer service. And um, we've planned uh, just a, a good interactive time this morning for us to gather together, to worship together. And so we encourage you to um, be sure to grab a communion, prepare that, uh, get it ready here in a few moments. We're going to have communion together. But plan to be involved this morning. And we want this to really be kind of a prayer service um, as we gather. Uh, as you know, this week uh, is the election. And uh, so many people are uh, thinking about that and, um, you know, either excited or anxious or both or ready to be over with or whatever it is. Um, but we definitely want to be uh, in prayer and we want to be in prayer and unity about this. And so that's what we want to do this morning is to worship, uh, to pray together. I'll come back in a few moments. I'll have just a thought for us uh, today. Um, but uh, I encourage you just to interact, to get involved. And so welcome to worship, and I hope you're ready to worship this morning. Our scripture reading today comes from Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2, and 28 through 29. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worshiping God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that the heart, thou my best
king of my heart. Nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best Lord by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence, my light. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night And through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope What could I imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living home It's great for me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Hallelujah Praise the one who set me free Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your very body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus, yours is the victory
It's time for us to, to pray. And as we sit in our homes or wherever we are watching this, we can pray about our country. We can pray about our own selves. But our focus really is on us as followers of Christ. And in this troubled time, we need to pray this prayer. And remember, as you pray, to pray that uh, you will be grounded in Christ and that you will seek to follow the Lord's direction in all you say and do, and that you will be rooted there as a follower of Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We pray that you will be with us in, in the days ahead. That no matter what happens in our country, whether it's COVID or whether it's rioting or whatever, that we're rooted and grounded in our faith in Jesus Christ and our hope in him. Lord, be with each of us as we go forth, as we stand strong, as we stand identified in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and reach out to others, to lead them, to encourage them, to show them the love of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been in this series from the book of Daniel that we've called Stand, and we've been looking at some of the stories of courage and kind of want to wrap up that series with just a thought um, from Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. And Daniel's an old man now. And he has been uh, standing in faith. He's just been standing in faith. He's been a man of prayer. Um, Daniel chapter 6, we see that he kept praying even though um, it was outlawed. <laughs> And the Lord rescued him. And so he's a man that's uh, courageous. And he's been standing in faith. He's been um, praying for the rebuilding of the temple. He's been praying for freedom. He's been uh, just standing in faith uh, in prayer. And in Daniel chapter 10, I want to read some verses um, and just kind of leave you with this thought. 
in Daniel 10, he has another vision. And, um, and really after another vision, and, and the vision is of war and hardship and difficulties. Uh, by the way, uh, next week, uh, I'm going to begin a three-week series called He Still Got the Whole World in His Hands. And so that's what we're going to look at. But Daniel gets this vision. It's very disturbing. And in Daniel 10, this is what it says. Daniel says, I looked up and I saw a man dressed in linen clothing with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His face flashed like lightning and his eyes flamed like torches. His arms and his feet shone like polished bronze. And his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. Only I, Daniel, saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing, but they were suddenly terrified and they ran away to hide. So I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. And sometimes God has something just for you. And he had something just for Daniel. And he says this, Daniel says, my strength left me, verse 8. My face grew deathly pale and I felt very weak. And then I heard the man speak, and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted, and I lay there with my face to the ground, with my face to the ground. And then it goes on and says this, just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you're very precious to God. And I want you to remember that that God cares for you more than he cares about what you do. He cares about you as a person. And he says, Daniel, you're very precious to God. So listen carefully what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I've been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up still trembling. Then he said, verse 12, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request has been heard in heaven. Now keep in mind, Daniel's been praying for a long time. In fact, he's in this season of fasting and prayer. And then this is kind of the verse I want us to think about. He says, I have come in answer to your prayer. And verse 13 says this, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the prince, with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. In verse 13, 21 days. For 21 days, I tried to come and be the answer to your prayer. But because this battle is not against flesh and blood, but because this battle is against principalities and in the spirit realm, Paul says later on, right? Because that's where the battle is. It actually took 21 days for the answer to come because there's a lot going on that we don't see. So here's what I want to leave you with today. As we've been praying and as we continue to pray and as we continue to Ask God to uh, help us stand, to stand up, to stand strong, to stand in faith, to be courageous, and to have hope. And so just remember that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the, the principalities, against the spiritual forces. And, and there's a lot going on that we're not aware of. And so be steadfast. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, praying for your family, for our nation, for our church. Keep standing in faith with all that you have, understanding that there may be things that you're unaware of, but the Lord is for you and the Lord is for us and he loves you. Stand firm. Uh, in, one, in Psalm 119, it, David is speaking and he's, he's talking about all these things about standing firm. But 
119.88 through 90 says, In your unfailing love, spare my life. Then I can continue to obey your laws. Your eternal word, O Lord, stand firm in heaven. Your faithfulness extends to every generation as it endures the earth you created. This idea of standing strong, things are going to come up, these circumstances will happen, but standing firm in God, standing firm in our faith, really helps us dive deeper into who God is and really what he can do for us. So stand firm in, in, in God, stand firm in what heaven is and what he's promised each of us. So as we go into this time of prayer, think about these circumstances that you may face, things that you need to stand firm in your faith on to, to really overcome the things that may happen, especially in our world today with, with COVID and with the election and all these things that are happening. We must stand firm in God. So as you pray, think about these ways of, of standing with God standing in these moments of his presence and his unfailing love. So will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that we are able to come to you, that we're able to stand firm in our faith, that we're able to stand with you in the midst of everything that is going wrong in the world, all these things that are unplanned, that are unhappenstances. Father, we, I just thank you so much that we're able to, to find comfort and, and stability in you, and that through your Son, we're able to, to, to take a bigger stand and a bigger step into faith and to stand firm in who we are in you, Jesus. So we thank you so much, Father, and of who you are and what you are to us. It's in your name I pray. Amen. One of the most central acts of our Christian faith is that of remembering the death of Jesus. This is a time in which we recall what Jesus went through and what he achieved as he suffered and died for us. And so at the river, we celebrate and remember every week by taking communion with the bread and the juice. And I think it's appropriate today as we've gone through this time of prayer to take a moment, you know, as we've talked about standing in our faith and rooting ourselves in Christ, that this act, as we remember what Jesus has done, that we are in a way um, remembering and we're rooting ourselves in the victory that Jesus had in this moment. That as we take the bread and the juice, that we celebrate the victory that he had over death. But we also remember the sadness and the pain that he experienced. And so it is in one hand, both a somber moment in which we feel what Jesus went through and remember that, but it's also a joyful moment in which we experience great freedom and remember that because of his death and his suffering that we have been given life that our sins have been washed away and we've been set free and so today as we 
spend time in prayer and reflection. Um, I just want us to take a few minutes, whether that's with your family or by yourself or with friends, um, that you will join me and setting aside some elements, whatever that is for you, and remember what it is that Jesus went through. And as you take the bread and the juice, that you'll recall what Jesus experienced and that that is what bought your freedom. But I also ask you to reflect and know that this moment is a way in which we center ourselves and our faith, that it is through Jesus alone that we have salvation, and that through his body and his blood, you have been given life. And as Christians, we declare this forever and ever. And so I ask you just to join me right now in these next few minutes to reflect on these things and to take communion in remembering that our victory is in Jesus and Jesus alone. So right now, we just want to take a moment and pray once again and think about standing in our faith. We've been talking about that. And really, the question is, what does your faith, what does my faith rest upon? Does it rest upon the things that we see around us, things that are temporary and are passing, whether it's our life circumstances, our families, uh, our nation, our jobs, whatever it is? Or is it on our unseen God who throughout history and even in our day, shows time and again that he's still at work, that he is busy building his kingdom, and he is desirous of restoring you and I and and really all people back into a relationship uh, with himself through Jesus Christ. So I just want to invite you right now to, to join me as we pray about these things.
So Father, we just come to you and just acknowledge that you are the creator of all things, that you are the Lord over um, this earth and everything in it. And we just want our lives to be a reflection of that. That when people look at us, they would see people who, whose faith is alive and vibrant. That isn't swayed by the, the temporary circumstances that we find uh, around us, whether on a personal level or even on a national level. But that our true hope is in Jesus Christ. And so, in, ex in expression of that hope and affirming of our faith, we just want to say, Lord, may your will be done in all things. And may your name be lifted up, Jesus. May you get the glory um, in our church, in our nation, and in our lives as well. And so we offer this back to you in the name of Jesus. Hello. So they've obviously saved the best for last this morning. Just kidding. I love y'all. But, and I know, Okay, you, what is even going on here? What, what are we even talking about? But um, in our messages, in our series that we are going through with Stand and um, with some of the devotionals that have been read over the last uh, few weeks and just with uh, the scripture that Jared read earlier, um, it just so happened that um, I was Charlotte at school this week and I was thinking then about what if we lived for God like Charlotte lived for Wilbur? Like, what if we were willing to stand up enough in our faith to die like Charlotte did for Wilbur? Like Charlotte, the messages she was willing to proclaim for him Okay, so my encouragements for you today are to be like Charlotte, to be like Charlotte. How can you stand up and proclaim your love and faith and commitment to the Lord our Savior? And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did last week. What are you going to do today? What can you do today? What can you do tomorrow to stand in your faith and to stand up for what you believe and for what is right? So I challenge you today. I encourage you today. What message can you send to people? Just like Charlotte's message that she sent about Wilbur, how amazing he was and at how great he was and fabulous. Like, how can you stand and send that message about God, okay? And my message is thankful, grateful, and blessed, okay? And I hope that I was, that you are able to offer that encouragement to others and to let them know how you stand, what you stand for, who you stand for. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday and we look forward to seeing you back in person next week to seeing all of your lovely smiles and faces and being able to worship together. So see you next Sunday, have a fabulous week and I look forward to hearing how you were able to stand in your faith this week.